Last year, Vizio noted it made $38.4 million and one quarter just from tracking and monetizing consumer viewing and user usage data. It made $48.2 <laughs> million on hardware. Wow. So they're, <laughs> they're not really selling TVs as much as they're just using the TV to sell you know, or to get access to your data so that they can sell that. Yeah, yeah even... That Go that ahead, makes Andrew. a lot of sense, yeah, because uh, the numbers that are that you just mentioned are like super huge, given that you know they're investing more in collecting data and making sense out of data more than they do out of equipment. So that's bad news actually these days. Yeah, just yesterday uh, here in the office that I'm in uh, down in South Texas, we we got a new TV and we're setting it up real quick, and it was virtually impossible to get past like the Wi-Fi connection screen and. It'll ask you like six different times. Do you want to cancel? It needs a <laughs> somehow it knew it needed a firmware update without even connecting to the internet. It just defaulted to there's a firmware update. Um, and then every time, for, probably for the first hour of setting up the TV, um, just getting like the picture settings and all that kind of stuff set up right, it would keep prompting back into uh, you know connect to a Wi-Fi network for optimal settings or whatever it is. It was a, it was a Samsung TV, <laughs> relatively new. Um, and I think honestly, what ends up happening is kind of the uh, I don't think it was like a high-end TV by any means. It was probably like a mid-grade, uh, mid to low-end TV um, that we just threw in a conference room here. But uh, they're, they're probably more aggressive on those, like especially ones that are probably deals and attract certain, um, you know, like if you buy a $5,000 OLED TV, maybe it's not so aggressive in terms of signing up. But if you buy that discounted TV, the reason it's discounted is a lot of time because of this kind of, uh, what do you call, uh, dark patterns that end up being there with the TV. So... Uh, not getting better anytime soon, I don't think. And uh, what do you call it? Just uh, not not good whatsoever. Well, remember like back in the day uh, when, you know, printers, people were selling, well, they're still selling printers. You know, back in the day, we thought about printers and you had the commercials with, like Shaq, you know, and it, basically they were, for the most part, it felt like they were almost giving away the printer itself the hardware, just so they could get you roped into buying the, the ink every month because that's where the real money was made exactly mm -hmm. this is like you know that on steroids because you know the the, the money making kind of just ended with you buying the ink here it's like it's just getting started you know we're, we're we're getting you hooked in we're getting your data we're figuring all sorts of ways we can monetize your data and so the ink is one thing this is like yeah th th this this could be endless you, i don't know if we'll ever see you know easily be able to buy a dumb TV or a dumb anything at certain points because the dumbness is where all the money is uh, is lost. Exactly. Yeah. That being smart these days, I think uh, more than the TVs being smart, it is more about the companies being smart on their revenue models. 